I want to talk about a few new features in Late Room 5 Beta, which just came out today. Now, it's completely free to download from Adobe Labs. There's a link down below this video to go get that. Um, you cannot upgrade your current catalogs, Lightroom 4 and previous. You have to export a subset of them. Adobe's very careful about that. They don't want you bringing over all of your files, working in Lightroom 5 and having something terribly go wrong. This is still beta software. But they do encourage you to try it out um, and give them feedback. And as I said, I just want to touch on a couple of the new features uh, that I think are, are pretty nifty. So the first one is Smart Previews. Now, in the old days, which was before Lightroom 5 Beta came out, what a lot of people did, especially laptop users, um, is they would have their catalog on their laptop, but the actual master files on an external drive, um, because you're, you're, you know, those that catalog of files can often get very, very large. The actual Lightroom catalog doesn't get very large. It just holds the previews. And so when you're disconnected from that external drive and you go off traveling, you go off um, someplace else, you can see those images, you can browse them, you can look at them, basically the same thing, uh, but you can't do any editing to them. Now, with smart previews, um, and you can have these, you can uh, create smart previews when you import or after you've imported. Right here, I have this little original photo button, and I can click this. What it will allow you to do or what it does is create a DNG. This is Adobe's kind of raw camera format. And it will create this within the catalog um, on the laptop. And when you're disconnected from your masters, you can make edits, you can make changes still. It is a limit, it is a smaller file. And that's a good thing for the most part because it keeps it smaller and keeps that catalog manageable and something that you're not gonna you know, stress out about storing on your actual laptop. Um, but you can make changes. And when you plug it back in, it applies those changes to the master. So as I said, you can bring those in on import. Um, you can have those built on import, or you can have them built afterwards. And it's really up to you how you ha handle that. And you can do it for a subset of your catalog, or the whole thing, or maybe just five pictures that you've starred five stars and you want to play around with when you're out about to travel across the country or something like that. So that's smart previews. That's pretty nifty. The next feature that I think is quite nice is the advanced healing brush. So in the old days, which again was yesterday, um, healing parts of your image, uh, you have this little circle tool and you could click and it would sample from another area. So right now these are actually stars, but let's pretend they're dust spots on my sensor. I click and it will grab from another area and it does a pretty nice job of dealing with those. But if you had something like this power line running across, this is where I would do a round trip into Photoshop and do editing because Photoshop's got that nice content aware fill tool. It would really be fairly quick other than the fact that you would have to go into Photoshop and then come back and you're creating an, a TIFF and all of that. Now Lightroom handles this much better. Using this tool, you can click and drag to paint an area. I'm going to make this a little smaller. That's just the bracket key that allows you to change that size fairly easily. And I'm just going to paint over this power line that runs across my scene. Being fairly careful to make sure I get it all. And then I wait for a second as it samples. And let's say it doesn't smart, didn't sample from the smartest spot. It sampled below when I really think it should be better if it was above. And I think it looks a little bit better there. Now click done. And that's pretty nice. My power line is gone. If we were looking very closely, there's just a hint of it left up there. I could clear that out and there's just a little bit more work that needs to be done in the branches. But that is quite nice. Now, I were in this tool, let's talk about another option. Actually, let's, let's skip out of this for a second, out of this image and go to um, an image like this and talk about uh, the gradient tool. Now, for folks who have followed me and are fairly new to Lightroom, um, you may not be aware of the tool that this has come from, but the gradient tool, the gradient filter is something that I really love and it allows you to apply a gradient effect to your image. And in this case, and it's all the same stuff that's in your basic panel, uh, 
you can lower your exposure for that gradient and it smoothly, as a gradient, applies that over your image. So you can um, you know, do that. We can bring up our saturation a little bit. It gets that sky a little bit blue to match. And then that's quite nice. What did it look like before? That's what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. That's very nice. I use that tool quite a bit when I have skies, especially if I've forgotten to bring my circular polarizer along. It's not quite the same, but it does a nice job. Now there is, let's reset that, there is a radial version of that. Now this, this image is not a good example uh, to use it on, but we're going to go ahead and do it since we're already right here. And it applies the exact same effect, but in a radial gradient. So almost like a vignette, but you have many, you have much more control over your settings than just darkening or brightening the edges. Let's go apply this in a more um, realistic and helpful way. So let's say oh, done and let's get that back up. Let's go back to the steeple. And now here we could use that linear gradient or we could choose a radial gradient. If you notice down here in the bottom right, uh, my exposure is blown out a little bit, so I can drag this out in kind of a radial gradient effect and invert it. There we go. And now I am decreasing the exposure of that area down there fairly smoothly and naturally. So that's the radial gradient tool. Last tool that I'm really going to touch on, and again, I don't have a great example photo of this, uh, but we'll look at what it does, is there is now a much more robust kind of lens correction setup. So there's always the lens correction down here and you get a profile, you pull up the uh, image and you pull up the lens and if it's smart enough, most times the Lightroom knows automatically what lens was used. This was the one wedding that I shot with the Tamron 24 to 70 that I was very unhappy and it was packed up the next day after this wedding. But um, here under the basic, we now can automatically say, well, you know, there's a lot of distortion in this one. I was a little crooked, don't know what I was thinking. And two, there's just distortion shooting a building, um, you know, up close and a little zoomed out like that. So we can say, Geez, will you level this for me? And then just looking around at the image, Lightroom says, sure, we'll level it up for you. Now you can even reduce the distortion more. There's still distortion. You can see how that kind of the top of the barn looks like it's leaning back. It's not really leaning back, but we can say fix it even more. And as I said, this isn't a great example because it was distorted enough that to fix it, it had to chop off the bottom. But now you can see that it's very straight feeling. We can even go to full, which I don't know if that really does any difference in this case. I think vertical was better, but I was happy with level, even though it does look like it's leaning back a little bit. So that was Smart Previews, the Advanced Healing Brush. This is called the Upright Tool that we're in right here. Um, and, there, um, and the Radial Gradient. Now, a couple things that we didn't talk about that I will come back and touch on in future videos. So the video slideshow system is now a good bit smarter um, and handles images and video clips and music in a better way. It did that in Lightroom 4, but now it, it's a little smarter about how it does that. And the book module has been enhanced um, and you can add page numbers. Inserting text is a good bit easier. So those are some new features. Lightroom 5 Beta, as I said, is completely free. If you have a spare few minutes, you should download it. Try it out if you're a Lightroom 4 user. Uh, quite nice. And if you have any questions about Lightroom 5 or Lightroom 4, just leave a message down below or come over and find me on Facebook. Thanks for watching.